Hello viewers. This video is about visual pathways and lesions. Before going on the visual pathway we must have an idea about the visual field and the quadrants of the retina. This upper nasal quadrant and lower nasal quadrants together forming nasal hemorrhetina. On other side it is upper temporal quadrant and lower temporal quadrant forming temporal hemorrhetina. The upper nasal quadrant looks at the lower temporal quadrant of visual field and lower nasal quadrant to upper temporal quadrant. Means the nasal hemorrhetina looks the temporal region of the right eye visual field. The upper temporal quadrant looks toward the lower nasal quadrant of right eye visual field and lower temporal quadrant looks at the upper nasal quadrant of right eye visual field. Means the temporal hemorrhetina looks at the nasal field of right eye visual field. The central white circle in the retinal diagram represents the macular region corresponds to the central area of the right eye visual field. In the next diagrams I will show the nasal and temporal hemiretina as like this and upper and lower hemiretina like this. This whole concept will make us able to understand the visual field defects. The both optic nerves receive the signals from the both eyes crisscross forming the optic chasm and the optic tracts terminates to lateral geniculate body. As I told this is the nasal and temporal hemiretina of left eye and right eye. For understanding the concept. I made the two visual field rather than one. Right eye temporal hemiretina looks at the nasal field of the right eye visual field and left eye nasal hemiretina looks at the temporal field of left eye visual field. Means right eye temporal and left eye nasal hemiretina looks the left side of the common visual field and right eye and left eye nasal and temporal retina looks at the right side of the common visual field. The sensations from the right eye temporal hemiretina and left eye nasal hemiretina reach to the right side lateral geniculate body and the sensations from the right eye nasal hemiretina and left eye temporal hemiretina reach to the left side lateral geniculate body means both temporal hemiretina projects ipsilaterally and both nasal hemiretina contralaterally. The lateral geniculate body is the six layer structure one is most ventral and six is most dorsal anatomically. The fibers from both temporal hemiretina projects in layer 2, 3 and 5 of each side of lateral geniculate body and from both nasal hemiretina terminates contralaterally to the layer 1, 4 and 6 of each lateral geniculate body. Further the sensations from the layer 1 and 2 terminates as magnocellular pathway on right occipital cortex and sensations from layer 3 to 6 reach to the right occipital cortex as parvocellular pathway. These both pathway form the optic radiation. Let's have a look about the layers of interest of occipital cortex. These are the main layers 4th A, 4th B, 4th C alpha and 4th C beta where the both pathways are projected. The parvocellular pathway project to the layer 4th C beta and magnocellular pathway to layer 4th C alpha. In addition, the afferents from the ipsilateral and contralateral layers of the lateral geniculate body are segregated into alternating ocular dominance columns. Lesions. The lesion number one may be due to increased intracranial pressure or injury to the optic tract. Produces complete loss of right visual field called anopia. The monocular vision loss. The second type of lesion may be produced either by aneurysm of internal carotid artery or tumor of anterior pituitary. There is loss of temporal visual field called bitemporal hemianopia. The third type of lesion creates the loss of right nasal and left temporal visual field called contralateral homonymous hemianopia. The upper and lower retinal quadrants which look at the right lower visual field and right upper visual field respectively. The sensations from the upper retinal quadrants project to the medial half of right lateral geniculate body and from there to the upper peripheral quadrant of retina and upper quadrant of macula at the superior lip of calcarine fissure. The sensations from the lower retinal quadrants goes to the lateral half of right lateral geniculate body. From there to lower peripheral quadrant of retina and lower quadrant of macula at the inferior lip of calcarine fissure. Lesion number 4 creates upper nasal quadrant anopia. Lesion 6 creates upper nasal quadrant anopia with macula sparing. Because lower quadrant of macula getting the sensations not the lower peripheral quadrant of retina. If the lesion 6 and 7 are created then nasal quadrant anopia with macula sparing will occur. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.